It's me. So you may have noticed that lately on this channel, I have been using Ableton and the Reason Rack plugin to teach Reason Rack stuff. Some of you have been asking in the comments why I've been using Ableton as my main DAW lately. Now, I go back and forth between Reason and Ableton, but the snappy workflow of Ableton can't be denied. And if you're anything like me, you've been waiting for Reason to update the sequencer for a little while now. So I made a list, in no particular order, of some features in Ableton that make it so efficient. I hope you're listening, Reason Studios. Now, I realize that Reason and Ableton are two different programs with two completely different design languages. Reason's design language is skeuomorphic and really tries to emulate actual gear, which is helpful in terms of understanding it if you come from the analog world. Ableton's design language is more Spartan and focuses mainly on maximizing screen real estate without too much regard for the hardware devices of yore. If you use Ableton's stock plugins, which are good by the way, you can get your entire track done without even switching screens. I have about 10 features I'll quickly go through and I'll compare them against Reason where applicable. There's chapter markers so you can skip around. Let's get into it. Oh, before we get into it, here's my obligatory plea. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you've been here a few times. I really appreciate it. You know it helps us out. First up is S for solo. So in Ableton, if you have a track selected and you hit play, at any time you can hit the letter S on your keyboard and you can see here, it just solos the track that's selected. Hit S again to unsolo it. Really handy. You can also select that track and select, hold control and select this track and hold control and select that track. And now if I hit S, it solos those three tracks. Super handy. Now on the flip side, in Reason, there is no hotkey to just solo the track you have selected. And there's also, well, solo is a bit of a mess. <laughs> uh, you can select the track and in order to get the same functionality uh, as hitting S in Ableton, which is soloing the track and all of its automation and all of that, you need to solo it from the track. So either here in the mixer or here in the rack from the, the mix track. Um, kind of confusing. So that's what this sound does. Okay. So if I unsolo that, that was just for some context, but I wanted to show you that Reason has two flavors of solo, which I think is one too many. Uh, if you hit this solo button, you're actually just soloing the, the track, like the regions here. So this sound, in order to do what it's doing, is actually using some automation, automation on this filter here. So if I hit play while using this solo, you don't hear anything. And that's because the filter's closed and then it opens the sound like into existence. It's a low pass filter. So if I solo that now, you get to hear the sound. But that's pretty frustrating when you're working here in the uh, arrangement view and you wanna just quickly solo something to, to know that you're working on the right thing. Um, if there's automation, it can get complicated. So I end up switching, either double clicking it to get it to pull up in the rack, although careful with that because if it's a third party instrument, the instrument opens and then you have to close that, then press solo. Or I try to just be in the habit of hitting F5 and looking for the red marker. Oh, there it is. And then hitting solo. <laughs> so I don't know. S to solo is kind of nice. Next up is the ability to type any value in for any parameter within Ableton. So you can just select any knob and instead of 114, let's just change that to 100 or 110, oops, or change it to 98. Easy peasy and very handy in Ableton. Can't do it like that in Reason. You kind of got to do everything by feel. Which brings me to the next perk in Ableton is the ability to incrementally change a parameter's values by just using the up and down arrows. So you can see as I press the down arrow, it moves by one. Super handy. Let's bring it right back up to 114 just by typing it in. 
yeah, I like that functionality in Ableton a lot more than I like having to do every single thing by feel and reason. Sometimes you just want to type in the value. Next up, we have Ableton's warping workflow. It's much easier to warp audio, to time stretch audio in Ableton than it is in Reason. It's easier in terms of workflow and you can get a little bit more creative with Ableton. And the reason it's easier in terms of workflow is because of these, I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but because of these pseudo markers. Uh, it has hard markers, just like uh, a regular warping kind of workflow, but it also has these pseudo markers which essentially make it easier to warp big chunks um, and, and other things. But that part of the workflow makes it much faster to warp stuff in Ableton than it is in Reason. And it's more creative because they have more algorithms, more different ways to time stretch things. Texture is really cool and tones is really cool. You can like get kind of freaky with it um, and you can control the formants and the envelope in Warp Pro, which is for more for vocals. So yeah, the warping is, it's nice. One thing I will say about Reason's time stretching though is that it sounds great. Uh, you're not gonna lose anything in terms of quality between the two programs, but Ableton gets the edge as far as workflow, I would say, and creativity. Next up is Ableton's hidden automation. So in Ableton, uh, when you automate parameters, you can press A on your keyboard to see the automation and A on your keyboard again to hide it. So there's some automation here and here and here. And that just keeps things nice and tidy in your session. If we flip over to Reason, you can see that the automation here is all region based. So all, in my sessions, all the automation is graphite. So you can see how much real estate it's taking up all these graphite or gray regions. Um, I do like that it's region based, but I wish we could hide them because they take up a lot of space and sometimes you're scrolling past a bunch of automation just to get to where you want to get. So yeah, I wish you could hide that. And it was more linked to the track. I mean, it's kind of like separate. This automation that goes to this track could be anywhere on my session. It, I keep them neat and reason puts them near them. Uh, but yeah, it could get confusing if things get moved or whatever. So I wish they were a little bit more tethered to the track and I wish they were hideable. The next thing that makes Ableton really quick to use is MIDI comping. So just like you can do with audio in reason and Ableton, uh, you can do with MIDI in Ableton. So if I have these loop joists set up and hit record, Oops, wrong. <laughs> right? You just play your part over and over again, and then you can show take lanes, and there are all your takes. So not only can you just choose the best take, but you can also comp parts in. So I wanna start with this take, in the first half and end with that take on the second half or even the last bit there from this. So as you can see, the main lane is made up of, of, these, of a comp of these lanes. So that's really handy when you're not sure where you're headed with something and you can just noodle around. And speaking of noodling around, another feature that makes Ableton really quick to use is MIDI capture. So let's say you got your track playing and you're kind of just noodling around, trying to find some kind of melody that you like or some chords that you like. Oh, and you, you decide that you kind of like that, but you didn't hit record. You can capture it because it's always kind of recording in the background. So that's super handy, especially for those of us who get a little anxiety every time they hit record. Uh, you don't have to hit record. You can just hit play and play around and then, oh, there it was, and then capture it. So that's, that's, I would love to see that in Reason for sure. And also, once you've got your MIDI down, another cool thing that uh, makes it really easy to use the sequencer in Ableton is this MIDI fold function. So fold. So whatever MIDI you actually laid down uh, will just be the only MIDI that's showing 
when you hit fold. Kind of nice. It's, it's really helpful in like drum machine type situations too. So you can just see all the hits near each other. And also just if you know you're not changing the notes, but you want to change the timing or whatever, it's just easy to get all the other notes out of the way. So MIDI fold, really handy, really clever. Another thing that makes Ableton really easy to navigate is the way it handles group tracks. So you can group tracks in Reason, but they show up grouped on the mixer only. It's kind of to bust them for mixing, um, which is, it's for bussing them in Ableton too, but it handles it a slightly different way. So if you look here in Reason, I have all these synths grouped to this synth bus. You can see it here. And then all these bases grouped to the, and that, that works nice for mixing, but it doesn't really help you out when you're looking here on the arrangement page. But if we flip over to Ableton, you can see that the group tracks are grouped here on the arrangement page, which makes it easy to close a whole section down that you're not working on. Or, you know, it just makes it easier to navigate the whole thing and see the whole thing. Oh, I got all my synths right here. Oh, I got all my bases right here. You know, it just makes it easy. And then also they're grouped on in a mixing from the mixing standpoint as well. Um, it's just nice that they show up. I mean, the functionality is about the same. It's just nice that you can see them on the arrangement page. Another feature that Ableton has that is super handy and saves time is the fact that it will automatically number your tracks. So if you put this pound sign before you type the name of the track, then it'll keep it numbered even if you move it. So that was eight and now it's 11. Uh, and now something else is eight. Um, that's really handy for if you're, if you're the type who does, uh, who bounces all your tracks out and then does a separate session for mix down, they'll stay in the same order. It's also handy if you're, if you're sharing your track or you're collaborating and you need to bounce it down to share with somebody else, uh, or maybe even to send it off to get mixed or something like that. It's just nice that all the synths will stay together, all the, everything, the session will be imported in the same order that it is now. And that's handy, it saves time. So you don't have to like regroup everything together during the mix down because it'll just be alphabetical once you bounce everything out, unless you have these leading numbers. So that's handy. Another thing I love in Ableton is how straightforward it is to sidechain anything. Uh, as much as I love the rack and and hooking up a sidechain situation, I don't always want to do it. Sometimes it feels like it's a bit of a time suck. Um, so if I want to sidechain in Ableton, let's say this compressor, sidechain the bass to the kick or something like that, it's as easy as pointing the compressor to a channel. So I don't know, it doesn't matter. So if you just point it, to a channel here, then it's already, that's it. It's side chaining. Turn the side chain on, boom. Uh, that's really handy for, you know, cause that happens, you side chain a lot. So yeah, it's a time saver. <laughs> Another handy feature in Ableton to do with navigating your session is this zoom strip up here. So if you come up to the top and drag down, it's really easy to zoom in to where you wanna zoom in. I wanna zoom into the beginning. I wanna zoom into the end. It's, it's really handy the way it works. And if I switch over to Reason, it has a similar functionality. Um, it's this strip down here. If you hold shift, uh, and this is a tip, I, I didn't really know this until just recently. If you hold shift here and then drag up, it does kind of a similar thing. You drag down in Ableton, you drag up in Reason. Um, it doesn't work as well. I mean, it's, it works. Um, and you can see your whole session behind the zoom strip, which is kind of nice. It just doesn't, it's not as smooth. It's not as straightforward. Maybe I'm just not used to it though. Cause I've literally just started using this, but, um, but yeah, the zoom strip. So I don't know, maybe over time they'll even out to me, but, um, the one in Ableton is just nice. And I really feel like I have a command on where I'm zooming in and, and just moving around easily. And I don't have to hold a modifier like shift. Uh, that I have to hold in reason. So zoom strip. Next up is one of Ableton's native plugins. Uh, it's new to Ableton 11 and it's called drum bus. 
Now, typically I feel like I can recreate most things in Reason that, that exists in other DAWs, you know, little, little handy things that they have. You can usually make a combinator to kind of duplicate it if you like it, but this one is pretty special, Drum Bus. It does a lot and it does it straight in a straightforward way. Um, I use it on drum buses, but I also use it on individual instruments because of just how quickly you can dial in some color and some punch and whatnots. So we'll turn this off and then we'll solo this drum section. And then we'll turn it on and we can tweak it a little bit and you'll see. You can increase the transients, give it some crunch. It's just super handy. It's like one of those bus processors that I use a lot in Ableton. So yeah, I wish it'd be nice if Reason had something like that, just a one-stop shop to, I'm sure one could make a combinator, but it's pretty complicated. It seems what's going on behind here. Um, when you switch to the different types of drive, it does more than just like increase the distortion, for instance. So yeah, this is this one. I wish I could bring this one over for sure. Another thing that Ableton has that I wish every program had basically, and, and a lot of them do, uh, but reason doesn't is crash recovery. So when Ableton crashes, it'll, you just fire it right back up and it'll ask you if you want to recover your work. And that is super handy. You never get that massive feeling, feeling of anxiety when Ableton has a hiccup. Um, I will say though, for reason, which does not have crash recovery, it also doesn't crash that often. Uh, if you're using their native plugins and maybe some rack extensions, I don't know that I've ever really seen it crash in that scenario. I'm sure I must have, but I can't remember it. But you know, every once in a while you get a rogue VST thrown in there and it'll, uh, it'll cause it to crash and it does not recover your work. So you do have to stay on top of hitting save in reason. And it feels, feels like it should by now. So yeah, that would be one thing for sure that I would love to see them implement just so you don't lose your work. And there you have it. 10, well, 11 features I would love to see in Reason Studios. Now, all DAWs have their flavor and you can pretty much achieve anything you want on any of the main DAWs. And I'm happy with Reason. It's just that Ableton's rigorous attention to workflow over everything, including aesthetics, can't be denied. Also, the sequencer in Reason is a little outdated in some ways. I'm super glad we got VST3 finally, but I'm really looking forward to some sequencer updates. Also, I wanna thank my patrons for your patronage. I really appreciate you, thank you so much. And special shout out to D Leggett, what's up D, for becoming a second tier patron. You can support this channel for as little as five bucks, but if you want a special shout out at the end of my videos like D, you can become a patron from the second tier up. Workflow is an extremely important concept in DAW design. Now, every DAW has its own way. It wants you to tackle the tasks that we need to achieve to make music efficiently. If you wanna learn a few more workflow tricks in Reason, check this video out right here.